This QDS video will build a sample CAPE survey, demonstrate the survey using different types of questions and responses, and finally, we'll take a look at how our CAPE data file is saved. Building a CAPE survey follows the same process as building an ACASI, so this tutorial will demonstrate those steps as well as pointing out differences between the two survey modules. Once you have completed your survey development in the Design Studio, or would just like to test out your survey as it currently stands, go to Build CAPI Application from the main menu. This will open the Control File dialog box. The default file name will be listed here. You will notice that it is a combination of the Design Studio file name plus EN for English plus CAPI.QPI. Then, if you wish to change any build options, click on the Options button that is located in the lower right corner. Then, click Save. You will be asked if you would like to try out the control file now. If you select Yes, the first screen of your survey will open. Alternately, you can also open the CAPI survey by double-clicking on the survey file name from Windows Explorer. Note that you can also have a desktop shortcut to start from. Again, Note that our CAPI interview control files always have the file extension of .qpi. CAPI will open to the first screen of the survey, which is an information element. On this first screen, you will see a display of the interview date and start time. It is usually a good idea to have these recorded. They are added in the Design Studio file with automatic date and time type elements. Note that the date and time data will be saved in your CAPI data set. When the interviewer is ready to proceed, they can click Next Question. Also notice that the CAPI has a menu interface available during the course of the interview. This is one way that it is different from the ACASI interview module. From the main menu, the interview options are New Interview, End Interview, Comment, or Exit. Selecting New Interview will end the current interview and take you to the Open dialog box to start a new one. Selecting End will simply end the current interview. And Exit will also exit from the CAPI program. For all of these options, such as going to End Interview, you will first be asked, are you sure you want to terminate this interview? And if you select No, you'll return to the screen. Note that if you select yes, then that will end the current interview, which will be an interrupted interview, which you can resume later. The interview comment option brings up a notes dialog box. This is where the interviewer can enter comments about the interview. These comments can be exported as an interview comments log from the warehouse manager, and you can also include interview comments as part of the summary report. Under Tools, you also have some options of Add Passwords and Remove Passwords. You would use these if a read password was defined under Security Options in the Design Studio. Tools Options allows you to disable Automatic Display of Probe if that option was set under CAPI Build. Probes are a feature unique to CAPI and HAPI that display additional text information for the interviewer during an interview. If they're automatically displayed, then they'll pop up without the interviewer having to call them. The Help menu also has several options. The probe text or an image can be called up on the screen from this menu if they were specified in the Design Studio. If they were not added, then those options will be grayed out like here. The final options on the Help menu will take you to the QDS Online Help or to the QDS website. The first question in this CAPI is to collect a numeric subject identifier. The interviewer can use the on-screen keyboard. They can also use the clear button to clear out their response. And they can also use their own keyboard to enter their numeric response. When complete, they can click Next Question to continue. The first screen here is an information element that displays Welcome to our study. Thank you for participating. You will notice that in the bottom right of each screen, there is also a previous question button that allows you to go back, as well as the next question button allowing you to go forward. 
This next screen demonstrates a gender question that uses the male and female picture buttons. After the interviewer makes their selection, Cappy will proceed to the next screen. The next question is, what is your date of birth? This demonstrates a data element with a date type response. Again, you can use your keyboard to enter the numbers or you can use the on-screen arrow buttons. When you are done, select Next Question to continue. Our next question has a pick one response type for which category best describes your educational background. When we pick our one response, we will automatically proceed to the next question. If you would ever like to change a response, select Previous Question. You'll see your last response highlighted and then you can choose a different response. This next screen shows a check all that apply type question. Which describe your employment status during the past year? Check all that apply. You can see that you are able to check more than run response and you can check and then check again. This question also includes an other response. If it is selected, the next item will be an other specified text item. This is programmed in the Design Studio as a data element with a text type response. When you are done selecting all your Check All That Apply responses, click Next Question to continue. Since we did select Other as one of our choices, our next screen is the text type response for entering the Specify Other. This screen would have been skipped over if we had not selected the other response. This is programmed with a skip element in the Design Studio. After we have entered our other response, we can click Next Question to continue. Sometimes in a survey, you will want to have a transitional information screen that alerts the respondent to the next type of questions coming up. Here, this screen tells them that the next set of questions will ask about your health. This next screen demonstrates a rating scale type response where you can answer the question, how would you rate your current state of health? By clicking on the line from zero being worst possible health to 10 being perfect or best possible health. Once you've made your selection, you can click next question to continue. Sometimes you will have a series of pick one, check each, or rating scale type questions where the response categories repeat. For example, here we have the first question of a series where the responses will be from rarely or none of the time to most or all of the time. This is programmed with a response card in the Design Studio. Once we select our response, we'll continue to the next similar question this next question demonstrates a yes-no type response that uses the yes and no picture buttons. Have you ever smoked a cigarette? For this question, we've also added the option to open up an image, which we can do this by clicking on the View Picture button, or we can go to the Help image for this question option. And once you've completed viewing your image, you can click OK. We've also added a probe for this question, which we can pull up from the Help menu. And once you've completed reviewing that information, you can click OK. We have also allowed the special code responses of Don't Know and Refuse to Answer. These buttons are always visible in the upper right-hand corner of the CAPI screen. If a special code choice is not allowable, that button will be grayed out, like the Not Applicable option for this question. After you make your selection, CAPI will then proceed to the next screen. This next question shows a time span type response. How long has it been since you last smoked a cigarette? Time span categories here are years, months, and days. Other options could possibly be weeks, hours, minutes, or seconds, up to three categories maximum for a question. Again, you can use the keyboard to enter your responses, or you can also use the on-screen arrows. Once you've completed your response, select Next Question to continue. On our next question, we have a numeric type response and we'll enter our number in the box. And finally, we're at the final screen in our survey.
slash information screen displays a thank you to the respondent. After this, and you click next question, you'll see the question box asking, do you want to continue with another interview? If you say yes, a new interview will begin. If you choose no, you'll be taken to an empty CAPI window. Note that the data will be automatically saved if that option was turned on under CAPI build. Then go to interview exit to close the CAPI program. To see where the saved data file from our CAPI interview is located, go back to the folder that contains the .qpi CAPI interview control file. Now you will see that we also have two new files. We have the study on CAPI.log. This is the log file that contains our interviewer comments that we just talked about. And our study.qad file, this is our CAPI data file. This is the file that you will bring into the Warehouse Manager for data management and export. To learn more about QDS data files and data management with the Warehouse Manager, see QDS Online Help or other QDS videos.